when I first started making banjos, I, I wanted to have something uh, that would be recognizable about some of them anyway. And there's something about old time music that seems to lend itself to, you know, Rooster. It's all through folk art. There's a lot of songs like Cluck Old Hen, and there's this Uncle Dave Macon song, Rise When the Rooster Crows, which I thought, like, well, that, that could be a perfect slogan, uh, especially if I call the model of the banjo the rooster. And, and then it could have a rooster on the peg head. Well, this banjo has um, a large tone ring and um, an extra deep pot, a resonator, and this thumb scoop as opposed to the S scoop. So somebody who wants to play two finger style can play all the way up to the 22nd fret. That's all the frets there. And somebody who wants to do claw hammer can do here, or you can move up to this position for that more open sound. And your thumb has plenty of big room there underneath the uh, string. I am very particular about woodworking. I make, make these banjos as, as well as I can make them out of the best material I can get. I'm always looking for what I think is the really good materials and really good hardware and, and um, trying to you know make the make it fit together tighter and better and cleaner and that, that's kind of my, my thing really. And I, I feel like if you strive for perfection, You'll never make it, but uh, it works to to strive for it, and you come out with something nice. You know, if you if you sell yourself short from the from the get go, you're definitely not gonna you know ever get there. When Michelle and I come up with something like this. I leave material on here for her to work with, so the neck is finished up to here, and the, this is shaped. The fingerboard is, of course, to its final shape, and then, but this area is just like kind of squared out, and she just does whatever she wants, and I'm always like very amazed and impressed. People ask for, for woods of all different kinds. Some people like a really dark looking instrument, so they want a, like a black walnut banjo with a heavy fingerboard. Other people like a really light looking instrument, so they want maple. One of the really nice things about making instruments one at a time is that I can, I know like wait really early in the process that this is gonna to go together. The cherry of this pot is made from the same board, so those are going to match up really nicely. And then this is also apple on the bottom here. Uh, these are just little burn marks from the router, those will sand out and it will look pretty much just like that. Uh, one of my things is to, uh, to try and use local wood as much as possible. Um, I harvest wood around here in southern Vermont. Um, so like this, all this maple up here was a carpentry job I was doing. We had to take some trees out. So of the, you know, I got probably like a couple hundred board feet. And out of that, this little pile here is, is all banjo quality. I feel that um, given that human beings have uh, certain you know, possible potential for using their five senses to do various things, um, making music is, is one of the most evolved things that humans can do. So making musical instruments 
basically, you know, people can use them to make music. And you either play by yourself or you play with other people, but that's what they're for. You know, and uh, if everybody in the world took responsibility for what they were making, what they were creating, the world would be a much better place. You know, so I'm happy to say that I uh, get up in the morning, I, I go to work, and I make banjos. That's like a big picture part of it. And then the little picture is I'm just making banjos and just, just shut up and make your banjo and play music. <laughs>